And I was like, actually, he's been around a long time. He's like, really? I've never heard of him before. Where's he come from? Talk to me. Why has he suddenly flourished in, in this team at this time when he's been around for so long? Just a matter of the, the current environment suits him really well. I think Sindarin used one word a couple times that I think is really the key, and that's stable. You, you have to have a stabilizer somewhere in your lineup. And Ace, he plays these heroes that can snowball from ahead, but can also contribute from behind, like a, like a clinks, right? He's always going to be able to do some damage in a fight, even if he doesn't have that much farm. And you really need, with so many greedy players at other positions on a team, you need one player that's going to be that stabilizer. Okay. Uh, draft is uh, back with us. Yeah, there's Earth the Chen and Earth Spirit. Yep. All right. As, I feel like as predicted. I think Newbie want Nyx. I, I have a I feeling. Think so too. It's going to be a hot contest to pick this game. The question is, so we haven't really seen Secret run Enchantress in the stead of Chen for a while. It was one of Secret's big picks in the qualifiers, actually. They were first picking Enchantress, first picking it with Bane. Uh, I, they've kind of gone away from their inch as of late, so I don't think Newbie are going to be that scared of that one. No. Um, maybe could ban Rubik if they want to first pick Venomancer. Uh, that's considered one of the best counters right now, just because, haha, I have Plague Wards too. You know, what are you <laughs> going to do now? Um, as a support, with in addition to obviously most people are focused on that. You also have the Null Field, really great aura against Venos, poison right. damage. Next ban is coming out from Secret. So, actually, did I get it the wrong way around? A Secret first pick here? They are. Okay, I thought it was the other way around. So, I think that's probably why they might have switched it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that that might have been the reason for the delay. I was wondering about that. I see. Okay. Yeah, this this does change things quite a bit because newbie now needs to choose. Uh, Secret might want to first pick Venomancer, they might want to first pick the Rubik. Mm. And that's... Yeah, the Rubik ban is actually really interesting to me because Secret has banned two of Yapsar's own heroes. Yeah. So I, I actually think, I think, I think that's correct, really though. Good. I, yeah, exactly. I think that is correct, though. I think right now, playing against Secret, uh, you, you start to adopt the same philosophy of playing against Liquid. You're not going to let GH beat you with Liquid. You're not going to let Yapsar beat you with Secret. They banned the Night Stalker. That's another hero Secret has played. Uh, a bit surprised to see that, actually, because um, there's still a couple of pretty good Night Stalker counters in the pool. Spirit Breaker was in, mm -hmm. Venomancer was in. Venomancer, I think, is the best counter to Night Stalker this patch. Just flat out extremely good vision. Even during darkness, you can get information. You have a strong slow against a hero that's movement reliant. Uh, but they, they throw the ball over to Secret. Their concern could have been, so when you're... This is the advantage of first pick in the first phase, is that the reason they banned this Night Stalker, perhaps, is that they're like, Secret could first pick Venom. And then we don't want to pick Night Stalker into Venno, and then they can pick Night Stalker last in that phase. The thing is, Venno and Night Stalker together is a bit awkward, but I think especially the Chinese teams and the SEA teams have been able to make that combination work. The reason it's awkward is that wow. Venno is a five-man hero who really wants to, you know, group up and, and push together, and Night Stalker wants to skirmish. So, so they, they basically here taken two puppy uh, picks away and then picked one of his for their first pick. So yeah, Secret gonna gonna make sure they get at least one of his, which is the breaker. Yeah. I, I, I'm. This is a really unusual That's first pick from Secret. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look back at Star Ladder and PGL combined, uh, Spirit Breaker was four and eleven overall on these two events. He's not seen the kind of success that we'd expect. And you know, for exactly the same reasons that Cinderin was saying, I'm now surprised with this Veno pick. They they went Veno first phase, both games against Secret at Star Ladder, and it didn't work out. Tried partially because in the second game they got Rubik. Yeah. 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 Does uh, does Kaka play Rubik? I think Faith doesn't really like that hero very much. Uh, Newbie is not a big Rubik team. I've seen them run it, but... I'll almost, I'll not almost guarantee you if they don't pick it now, Secret will like snap, oh, snap I, Rubik. I, I'm I don't see why you wouldn't. It's good against Venno. It's good for Secret. It's a pretty solid pairing with Spirit Breaker. There's one very ag aggressive early space creating support to allow for the greed of Yapsor on the Rubik. Uh, Puppy plays a great Spirit Breaker. It might seem a bit counterintuitive because in a lot of other teams it's the roaming support player that plays the Spirit Breaker, but I think in Secret it's exclusively yeah. Puppy. They yeah, never always, play this always Puppy. Absolutely. Yeah, it's his third most played. And there was the Rubik taken by Newbie themselves, so they protect okay. that. Huh. And okay. instant Nature's Prophet. So Secret are already expecting. They're like, okay, they're going to pick Venom Rubik together. What are we going to do? And uh, this is one of Secret's classic counter picks to Venomancer, the Nature's Prophet can do well in lane against Venomancer, can destroy the Plague Wards pretty easily with Trance, and most importantly, Venomancer's biggest weakness as a hero is that it's very immobile. It's yes. slow, it has to move around, or actually, rather, it has to stay in place, because you need to build a house with Plague Wards, yep. and Furion's all over the place. So well, and so is Spirit Breaker. Up. And so is Spirit Breaker, yeah. This is a very aggressive approach from Secret, and uh, I've been very impressed with Fatsa's play on Nature's Prophet, by the way. I think he's outstanding, so... 
if he has a good game here, this is already looking very promising. No, yeah, just... The only thing he's played more of is Puck in this particular patch. So yep. he's oh, and he's one of the, one of the winningest man. Pucks all the time, yeah. too. He's very good on, on Puck as well. Yeah, uh, Nature's Prophet, one of the strengths of the hero in the pro game has always been you can build him so many different ways. You can play him as a team-oriented hero. You can play him as a scaling farming core. Uh, and Fata is just, he's very adept at both play styles. I really like that here. So if you're looking at newbies heroes right now, the way I see it is that uh, we're going to probably transition into a classic newbie strategy that is very team-centric. Uh, they have the Venomancer that wants to group up. They have Rubik, who's a team fight support. Uh, and Secret wants to play split. So it's going to be a clash of styles, almost guaranteed. Like Even if Secret now try to take it in a team fight direction, newbie's team fight is likely to be superior. So uh, I feel like Secret are looking for the type of hero that exactly this ban would have given them, yeah. the yeah. Ember Spirit. Yep. Well, play suitable for both teams. Mid one's most played here on this and, current patch, and, and SCC's most played in this patch as well. And he is the yesterday. Um, yesterday, mid one became the most wins on Ember Spirit all time. He got his 43rd win on the hero, passing Ferrari 430. Oh man, that's uh, a name you haven't heard for a while. Yeah, exactly. That's why I wanted no, to bring this down. I haven't heard for far too long. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, and he also has, if you look at the dozen or so players with 20 or more appearances on Ember Spirit, he's got the top GPM, he's got the top win percentage, it's, it's really sick. The, the Chaos Knight ban uh, by Seeker here is interesting. That's a hero that has gotten a lot of play recently. He's become one of the top win percentage players in the pro game since TI. Uh, possible indication of what direction Secret want to go. Uh, it, it Sometimes there's just this hero in the second phase that you ban just in case, like safety. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the times you'll see second pick teams banning Brood just so they don't get the Brood on pick 16 or yeah, on uh, on the 8th pick. Um, and that is actually exactly coming out from Newbie right now. So uh, they're securing themselves against that. But I think possibly this Chaos Knight ban hints a little bit at Secret considering Lifestealer. Uh, it's very strong in Fest partners, both Spirit Breaker and Nature's Prophet. It's a hero that has good matchups in both Veno and Rubik. Both are 100% magic based, and it's one of Ace's heroes. So, yep. uh, which they can, in addition, put on mid one. Mid one plays it too, so they have like a bit of flexibility. And I feel like Secret are thinking about that right now as an option. Alternatively, there's Weaver, who is great against Veno and bad against, or somewhat bad against Sorry. Rubik. It's like. Hmm. It's a bit of a tricky matchup, the Rubik one, because he can steal Shikuchi and he has an instant lift, but at the same time, if you get Scarabs off on Rubik in the back line, Rubik just dies. So uh, that one goes both ways. And it's this is another ban against Lifesteal. I feel like it's a Lifesteal game for Secret. I'm it's interesting curious. to me that Secret is leaving the Bloodseeker on the table, because that's a... Uh, Venomance of Bloodseeker is a combo that Newbie really likes. You, uh, you get everybody low with that Poison Nova, and the Bloodseeker is guaranteed to get that Thirst benefit in the team fight later on. Makes him more of a team fight hero than he otherwise would be, and it's just a combination that Newbie runs really well. The Moogie Bloodseeker, that hero just suits him so well with the tempo that he likes to play. The thing for me when I look at Newbie is that I think they're weaker if they put SC on Veno. I, I think yes. if they put Veno core, you put it on KP or you put it on Moogie. And mostly Moogie, I would say, is the better choice. The I, problem is the matchup this game is. I like KP's Veno uh, a lot better. And okay, so the Earthshaker probably going to be a support uh, in this kind of a Newbie matchup. Newbie leaving their two cores for last is something that they've done. Uh, very, very often Ooh, in yep. their drafts. It's also uh, Kaka's most played in this Whoa, patch as well. Whoa, that was unexpected. Hey, this there's the Wisp. Unusual for Secret. Look yeah. at the mobility. A page yeah. and a Liquid and AG. So Yapsor can play this hero. I think yep. Secret have kind of not picked this very much. Uh, it's not one of their absolute comfort picks, but it seems like they have a strategy prepared that they want to try here. Uh, very global oriented, very split. Are we, are we like going back? Oh, no. no. Are we going back to the SEA days in mid one tiny? That's a possibility. Now that we, would be awesome. Now we might not see the Lifestealer anymore. Because I, I don't like Lifestealer with these uh, with the IO. If they would have picked another hero here, I still think it could have been really great. It's also a hero that matches up pretty well against Shaker in many ways. It's a double-sided matchup. Tiny would also make sense with Chaos Knight, Sven Bands. Those are two heroes that can kill him. And this is, again, first pick in a really good spot now because Newbie have to be like, okay, we need to prepare for this next pick of Secret, yeah. what do we think it is? They, they, this, at this point, Newbie looks at this and says, okay, we need mobility. We need a hero that can get around the map, that can get around in these team fights, get to the back line, and put pressure on that Wisp with that natively low armor. I think Weaver was pretty much their best alternative at this point. The problem with that is that Secret is going to have been ready for that pick. And they have a Spirit Breaker. It's, you know, when you... 
I, I like to have this philosophy when you look at drafting that sometimes there is no perfect pick, and yes. then you can take the half, the glass half empty approach or the glass glass half full approach. And I think this Weaver pick is like some teams will be scared. They're like, yeah, this is Spirit Breaker. He has like two targeted stuns. It's annoying. But then if you look at the bigger picture, this Weaver is extremely good against Io, and that's kind of the hero that they want to counter. So you should in yeah. the back line. You get the swarm off. If the swarm hits Io, it can't heal. It keeps getting interrupted in its healing of the core and can just get killed off by the Weaver. Yeah, also good here against Furion. So I think you've got to you got to look to your strengths rather than your weaknesses in this draft. Uh, no, that's ve that's actually very well said. To me, I don't think Spirit Breaker okay. is as scary against Weaver because Weaver has enough mobility that Spirit Breaker is usually going to have to charge over the fight to yes. get to the Weaver, and you're going to have enough disables to knock him out of that charge. Even a four staff takes him out of that charge. The less track for Secret. This is not something that we saw coming, but this. This secret lineup now, in addition to the mobility, crazy, crazy push. This is. This what do you think of the lanes, different. though? What do you think of the lanes, though? Because we, we need we need to not lose sight of that. That we mentioned that as the key factor for secret and newbie. I agree. I it totally depends how good they are playing Io. <laughs> okay. It's uh this is a very delicate hero in the laning stage. I think only an expert will have a really good laning stage with this hero. Um, if you. I have a couple of heroes in Dota that I call like specialist heroes, where if you're not like extremely good on the hero, then a lot of the times it's not worth a pick. Other examples would be something like Meepo. Like you can be a good Meepo player, but is that going to win you a competitive match? Probably not. And I, I think of Io a bit in the same way, where you need to really love this hero and have played it a lot to really make it work against the best in the world. So I'm very curious to see if Yapsor has been putting in the hours, because to me he's not a stereotypical Io player whatsoever. It's uh, his eighth most played under this yeah. patch right now, but the majority of those have not been in competitive matches. So he has been playing it, has been practicing it. And obviously with a plan in How mind. many officials have they played with that hero? It must have been like less than a handful. I don't have that info in front of me, but it's not yeah. many. It, yeah. it can't be a lot. So obviously Newbie now with their advantage in the draft, they will have the 10th pick. So Secret have to show their full hand. And I, I like this point that uh, Nahas brought up about the Spirit Breaker in this game, because you look at Secret's lineup, and he's like their only really reliable catch, mm. but he's running into two counters. Uh, both the Rubik and the Shaker have cancels against the charge. And my concern for Secret is that they might have to pick a secondary way of catching. There it is, Vengeful Spirit. So they have the Nether Swap into charge, they have the Venge Stun. Um, this gives Newbie some time to think, though, because Secret's lineup, in my mind, will not win this late game. I don't think yeah. so. I think it's a very momentum-based lineup that needs to peak around the 25-35 minute mark. So Newbie has two approaches. Either they try to fight them early on and just match, or they're like, we can turtle this one out, guys, and win it late. So we'll see what they think. See, the Venge pick is a little bit puzzled. I, I just I didn't feel like they needed to go so all in on the mid game here. I thought oh, the classic 10th pick Necro focus. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> wow, we didn't see that time. coming. That's completely outside the meta. Um, no. Interesting. Yeah, it's really surprising that it went I, that far. Actually. I feel like Secret might have gotten a little bit too cute with their last two picks. I think they forgot about Necrovos. Mm. I okay. actually think they forgot because you generally don't get this far into the draft and this hero is untouched with no counters specifically being picked. There's no Necrovos counter picked by either side. So is this, this, uh, is really this is an SCC? Necro? I think so. Yeah. I think this last pick was we oh, yeah. really we good. Moogies every day, surely. Yes, Moogie yeah. is a great Weaver. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm newbie on this one. I think this 10th yeah. Necro with a hood is going to be almost unkillable for Secret's lineup. I think it's really strong. And, and and three picks in, I was absolutely convinced that I was going to be explaining why Secret were going to win the game. But <laughs> I just, I, I think with those last two picks, Secret got a little bit too cute, a little bit too all-in-ish on the mid-game oriented push lineup, where newbie have a very balanced lineup that they're comfortable playing. Uh, I, I like newbie's chances. It's all going to boil down to the laning phase. If Secret comes out of the laning phase with a lead, they're going to be hard to stop. Okay. Avalanche I, game. I, I didn't. I didn't hear any predictions as such. Though only just newbie. what would newbie. happen. But I did get the impression that you were both coming. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite. It wasn't that subtle, uh, as far as the, we're not uh, subtle guys. No, not subtle guys. Uh, the, the predictions are in. Uh, it's a clean sweep here on the desk. It's newbie all the way, according to our experts. But of course, this is a best of three, so anything can happen. But game one is about to begin. Newbie versus Secret, game one, get to start off day two with one hell of a matchup, and I'm looking forward to this one, Newbie, with the wonderful 10 pick, Necro, up against Team Secret, who are pulling out the IO, switching up some of their roles as well. Melini, how do you like the, how do you like the draft? 
A lot of this just depends on the App Store's Wisp. This is the second time I believe that we've seen him play it in recent times, and that's a tough hero. Uh, as Sin mentioned, you do want a specialist on this, so you know if he's a really, really good Wisp, this could go swimmingly well. If he's a really poor Wisp, uh, we could just see him get picked off by the Weaver in most of the fights. This does seem to be also, well, hello, they're going to come pretty close to each other in the mid. Just Spirit Breaker and SCC Siege showing each other. There's secret to the whole long wraparound. But yeah, this is this is one of these times where like it's a finesse hero for Yapsor and not just that brute force to kill style hero which like a Rubik can turn into. Are they actually gonna loop around both sides of Mugi? It's kinda of like the worst target of them to go on as well. They needed that stun to connect. The charge came a little too late, so magic missile will not hit the Weaver. Okay, Poppy's gonna follow through with this. Maybe not that far. At least they get one ward down in the enemy jungle, but it was already revealed in the mid lane by SCC. The Necrophos here, I think it's a strong pick because there's no counters, but at the same time, he really is not mobile. So they're going to have to turtle and play around their towers. They don't really have that many aggressive maneuvers they can make, which I suppose is a pretty decent approach versus Secret. Secret's uh, lineup has way more of a timeline than newbies, but like, how are some of these heroes going to get to the fight and actually help a lot? Necrophos and the and the Venomancer. You're playing against a Prophet and an Io. Yeah. And a Spirit Breaker. Yeah, like, these heroes can just be around the map in a matter yeah. of seconds. It's like a pseudo team global. Uh, that's the reason why you can be a lot more sustainable. Sin was saying it. Like, how do they actually kill off SCCC if he gets himself a good start? They just so play around them. Ensuring that with Kaka being in the neighborhood, maybe that's one way to do it. Kaka's gonna try and harass mid one, but it's it's both supports waiting for their opportunity. Bottom lane, Fada gonna be attacked in. Remember, he went for the trees to start, which was got no TP out of this one. KP and Faith gonna work together. The mid lane's being initiated on in the meantime. SEC really low. It's the race for first blood, and Fada, he'll end up going down with the fissure, creating the space in mid, denying team secret. Not only just the revenge kill, but that first blood that they wanted. Very nice position from the Fissure. I didn't actually think he'd be in that much trouble. So this is a very problematic lane for Mugi. He's not going to get that much CS, but at the same time, he should be okay in the survival department. They don't have any detection, I believe, on either of their heroes on the top lane. And on the bottom lane, yeah, we or they. he needs a TP at level 1. That's pretty much the only time you're, you're going to die, I would say. Uh, you can just TP out. If they cancel it, you just cast your TP again. So he said he went for boots and regeneration. Karka's coming back yeah. to mid. He's going to block mid 1 in. There's more support on the way in the form of that Rubik. So they can hold mid 1 there a little bit longer if you want to run closer. But with Faith arriving, mid 1 just has to keep running. The charge is coming in from Puppy, looking towards Karka. This is a long run to catch up to mid 1. And now that Io's arrived, mid 1 can look to turn. The creep wave is still giving a lot of vision. The pick up from Faith will just toss Puppy away. But this is all going to really amount to nothing. Three heroes dragged into the mid from both sides, but no kill is going to come from it. They killed that clarity. Clarity lives matter, Toby. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is like support kills that they matter to. <laughs> well, that is really sad. Getting, that's, that's like two fissures for him right there. 50 gold, you can get it back. You can save the money on TPs. It's probably flaming. Kaka or Flame of Faith. Why didn't he lift him up early? He would have gotten cancelled if he had to cancel the yeah. charge. Well, that was meant to be the big thing about Aruvik, right? Like, is that instant grab on, yeah. onto the Spirit Breaker. So there's multiple counters we talked about previously. Fada now on the run. The Gale from KP has connected as Kaka. He'll trace him into the trees. Mid lane is initiating in. SCCC losing a lot of life. Faith not enough mana to actually control up anymore. Use both Telekinetas as well as his Fade Bolt. The team secret just man mode it down the mid, but three here is still committed to do it. Man, he was so close to level four on the Necrophos. Sad times for him. He was just like maybe one range creep away from getting level four. He would have been okay with the Ghost Shroud. Still not level four. No, oh, now he has it. So now the Ghost Shroud gets leveled up with a full magic wand and the Null Talisman. SEC has got a better chance of potentially surviving that gank. So secrets still need to keep the pressure up, especially because the. Prophet is having troubles on bottom lane because the R Rubik is able to go down there without really too much suffering in their other lanes. I would say SCC has died once, which is not great for them, but still they've kept Fada down. If you keep Fada down in lane, he can't TP to other lanes and their whole early game just slows down to the point where Nubi will be very comfortable going into 20, 30 minutes because Secret don't have that big of an advantage. So I think Prophet is one of the biggest keys in this early game. 
Moogie's actually finding that space we're looking for, but we're how long until that Prophet can move off the lane when he's getting shut down? Yeah, Newbie have kind of shifted everyone to like down one lane because they know the Weaver's not going to die and they can actually get Weaver far by pressuring to two other sides of the map. But SCCC. Yep, being charged in the mid, Puppy and mid one, wanting to combine up, realizing it's not worth it when Karka's got that haste rune. He was already starting to harass up one, but doesn't get the body block off. He needed Puppy to be on the eastern side of that fissure. And he would have been in a rough position. He, they, they interestingly did not even go for that. They could have lifted, uh, I'd say Spirit Breaker maybe, but Spirit Breaker's kind of way too tanky. And then the left rock was already yeah. wisped up. They needed that time to actually attack Puppy when he was locked on the other side of the Fissure and then the control time from Telekinesis, so both needed to work. But uh, doesn't happen at the end of the day. There's also no stacks coming out from the IO. I see one on the very, very top side of the map, that large Dire Camp, but there's not really anything else. Where It's where Moogie is right now. They have one stack right now. They're, I mean, Lush is really good at clearing out uh, some of the other stacks, but... I think IO also loses some value if you aren't able to have like a big stack farm just because the hero is like really efficient about moving around the map, getting by any runes, healing everyone up, and stacking at the same time. So And how many times have we that. actually seen this movement coming in from Newbie that forces the rotation of Yapsol? They're they're very ready for this mid lane though. They're they're like I wouldn't say it's really overcommitting to like having three or four heroes in the mid lane just because of the threat of Spear Breaker charge as your last strike. You can't have your Necrophos have a bad game. Oh, Fissure Block once again. Not actually holding Team Secret on the dire side of the Fissure. Slow is good, though. You want a peaceful, quiet game. You know, you just want to chill. Chill and farm right. creeps if you're a newbie. Well, I actually thought, like, if you're a newbie, you would have got more farm on this bottom lane. KP at 23 to, to well, 24 to 3 to, to the 35 15 of Fada. It's kind of like the Treants versus the Plague Wards who can farm up more of, of either. Yeah, now he's, I think, tanky enough to the point where he can't actually just TP out if a Rubik comes. So if they want to gank Fada, they would need at least two heroes. But, yeah, as we've seen, most heroes are in the middle lane. KB's not even the heavy damager. Like, he went for a 1-1-3 one, one, build instead. So Gale, as well as Stinger, isn't really that threatening as, uh, well, okay. That seems a little easier when Wrath of Nature is able to kick through and find the damage onto the Venomancer. Newbie looking for their own rotation into one of the most farmed heroes on Team Secret. Ace on the top lane. He's up a long way, reveals himself, and SCCC can tank up the tower when they go for this initial movement. It's exactly what happens, and that's a level 6 as well. The Reaper Scythe is prepared. They need the damage to come in. Puppy with the charge, creates a space. Fast gonna arrive too. Mid one turning on that Nova. How much damage can you do? The Scythe will fall, but Mid one will tank it through, and it's actually gonna be Kaka, the first one to fall. Faith caught on the steps of the Cathedral. A secret will move forward looking for another target, but Nubia are already bailing out this one. This did not work, and we saw that power of Team Secret to bring the numbers in very quickly. Yeah, they were, that's the biggest problem for Nubia. That was a four-on-one, so they had at least, you know, three, four seconds of just four-on-one action, but couldn't burst down the Ventral Spirit at all. Let's have a quick look at it again, so... Initiation stance, Newbie definitely wanted Ace, but Puppy creates such space. But Kaka didn't fissure. Maybe he could have sticked earlier and then... Uh, it would have it would have been a really tight timing to block the fissure or block the charge from Puppy, but possibly could have done it, I would say. But still, he was kind of hesitating as to where would be the best place to cast it. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to trap himself in. Well, at that point, you kind of got to sacrifice yourself. If Nubi was capable of winning that fight, but you definitely see that early power that can come from the Latrak. And the fact they're all able to survive, they shrine up efficiently, move straight back into the lanes. I love Latrak. The hero's great. Whatever, like, he dropped off. Why did he drop off? In your mind. Mm, I don't know. He just seemed like he was... He just didn't do well versus some of the uh, meta heroes. Just as with many of the heroes that fall off. I don't know. He didn't really get nerfed that hard. He did get that huge nerf after TI6, but after that, kind of just not that many heroes were... Um, Is it like that indirect effect? Like, the other heroes are just better choices than what he was going to offer? Generally, yeah. Oh. Other heroes are way better versus BKB, too. I think it's a big issue if your mid-hero can't do crap versus BKB. Mm -hmm. 
wait to see all the anti-mages coming back again as, as Team Secret try and bring Lashrak back into the meta. Karka looking for the Fissure, able to connect over on Ace, charge forward again, Puppy the right place, wheeling back KP and Faith with that charge forward, but Mugi into the fight, they're bringing in that Weaver, but Wrath of Nature, Karka has to be sacrificed once again, Fart is here, everybody is here apart from Lashrak, so Mugi goes for something he can kill, and that's going to be a Courier, the Gemnet attack will allow him to get it, or actually will it, no, that Courier ended up surviving, it backed all the way out as mm -hmm. KP died once more. Wow, I thought he had a Germanate on it. Yeah, it, it, there was the two attacks flying through the air. Hmm, not sure what happened. Yeah, no, neither am I. <laughs> can we, I don't know if we can get replays on stuff that we didn't see on the screen. Either way, a Courier managed to survive somehow. Nubia are playing very aggressively, which you wouldn't actually expect from their sort of lineup. I think they need to actually just chill out a little bit. Yeah, so, yeah, so there's the first attack, and then the Gemini attack flies right behind. Does it... Does it miss? <laughs> oh well, that happened. They need a player, I would say, around the Venomancer uh, a little bit more because they're going to be trying to kill him a lot. Because I, I, I would say he's generally a pretty easy kill. Like Necrophos can stay alive long enough, but like if they're not swift enough to defend the Veno, they're not going to get like one of Veno's greatest strengths is like if you try and kill him, he's going to do a lot of damage to you. But if yeah. you if you're not actually there at the exact moment that they go on the oh, oh no mid one cock up the charge is coming in as well plus the relocate. If if you're not there at the exact moment that you go on the Venomancer, then they're just going to heal up from the IO. So yeah, secret this first couple minutes not terribly smooth from them, but you be weren't able to make anything happen with the Shaker and the Rubik duo. They certainly get a lot done with this combination, Team Secret. Like, a lot of it, we were saying, like, like Sin said it perfectly, like, you don't see them winning this late game with what they've got. Well, so the Wisp is in the right place damage. at the right time, and so has the uh, Spear Breaker. So their supports have just been playing much, much better and making things happen around the map. So when you beg the other question, like, is this the, the hero pickup just... Is it comfortable for Newbie, or is it just so uh, they're denying it to Team Secret by exactly. picking up that Rubik early on? That's what you mentioned. So you, you can draft. you can play it, but is it what you're really good at? Right now, this Team Secret draft just seems to synergize perfectly, and newbie they haven't had a great answer to it just yet. Maybe like a Hood Necrophos will help them out, but Necrophos actually went for a different build. He, he's going phase into four staff on Necrophos. Oh, that Fissure, oh, there wasn't enough commitment from newbie They couldn't catch him up. The Lashrak was just moving too fast. He backed out mid one just at the right time. I think they're going to be in a lot of trouble because Necrophos isn't going to be tanky enough. Ghost Shroud is usually pretty good, but Lush, the good thing about Lush this game is he, he doesn't actually need a Diffusal Blade to deal with the Necrophos. Most cores need a Diffusal to deal with Necrophos because you just don't have enough magic damage output. But Lushrak, I think he would actually love if <laughs> Necrophos went into Ghost Shroud this game, especially with no alternative source of heal uh, from his teammates. Oh, they're TPing Io in towards the mid, so it looks like they might finally put enough pressure to bring down the tier 1 tower. At the same time, Newbie, Faith and Kaka forever holding hands, roaming around. But there's still no level 6 on Faith. You still don't have that ability to steal while players like Fada, not a bad record for him, and it's a uh, quick movement into that Orchid on the Nature's Prophet. But do you actually think he's, he's meant to be disabling out of all the choices? Is it just to stop the Venomancer from getting that big... Big, big dot uh, damage. It's one of the best items versus Necrophos too, because Necrophoses don't build BKB. Oh, swap, charge in, and this is a very quick kill on Kaka. They're even having Wrath of Nature bouncing across the map. Yeah, so things are pretty going pretty smoothly for Secret. They just need to make sure to continue to take down T1s and T2 so they can keep their farm up. So going into the later game, they're going to need, like going into 30 minutes right now, I would say they need like, you know, 10,000 net worth lead at the minimum to be able to feel okay going 40, 50 plus. But at this pace, they should feel very comfortable. Mm -hmm. And they can do Roche very easily with their lineup too. That's one of the reasons I do really like the core bench pick. So good at taking down Roche. Uh, again, newbie. This Fissure will be able to connect. Faith is not in range for his telekinesis. Maybe if SDCC threw out the uh, the Scythe, but they needed the Scythe to find the kill. So it was a hard, hard point for decision making. And they dragged Mugi off that top lane, allowing Fada to now add more pressure to the tier 2. He doesn't have that much HP. He has like 1100 HP on the Lushrak. But Lushrak's actually an extremely fast hero. And he also went for the movement speed talent at level 10. They're probably like, why is this damn horse so fast? 
Man, he's not a horse. He's a unicorn. I don't know what he is, actually. Or Slacks for lore when you need him. Yeah, we yeah we need Slacks for that stuff. Like, he looks like a cross. Like, maybe he's a distant cousin of Centaur War... Uh, like, Centaur? Kind of. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, it's like a pony and a centaur got together and made a track. Yeah, I guess you could just call him Disco Pony. Disco Pony. I'm down for, Yeah, Disco Pony. That's it. That's his taunt. So Midtown has finally brought it down. Only took Secret four attempts to do it, but they kept forcing rotations out from Newbie every time. And now it's Secret's turn to rotate. They know the Shikuchi from Mugi is going back. Puppy lost sight of him for a second. Mugi just slipping up into the trees, breaking the vision line of Puppy. So how do Newbie get back in this game? Normally when you turn and say, oh, you're going to farm up with an empowered up Juggernaut. Oh, wait, no, that was Team Secret. Uh, or, or some kind of, like, good farmer. But you don't even have, like, great Ancient Clearance with, with the Weaver. It seems to be kills is the only way. Venomancer can sit in the, like, like in the Triangle Camp and just farm that on Dire Sides. So you can catch up that way. But how do they actually Dyer's catch people out. out? There's no Blink Dagger on Shaker. They're smoking, but... It's Fissure to Telekinesis That's is going to be it. That's so underwhelming. Oh, they're going to find Puppy, Ace, and Mid one. Everything they did not want to find. The Fissure cancelling the charge through. Puppy on the wrong side of that Fissure again. And Mugi wants to attack through the front. Has a time lapse out. Realizing just how much damage that Pulse plus Edict of Mid one does. SCCC trapped up inside. Off the Sprout, Farter in the back lines. Moogie's playing with him as Puppy just wants to go in deep. KP forced to ulti. He's ticking down at the moment to all the trees that's there with a bouncing Feybot. Moogie shikooching through Yapsaw. They finally get rid of that Master Stain and they steal the extra stun. Magic Missile into Ace. The Scythe will execute him. Exactly what Newbie won. Team Secret, they thought they had the power for the fight, but they thought wrong. Damn, that was a great fissure. I think he had two really good fissures in that fight from Kaka. But they smoked to the exact right place where they had vision. It was kind of really awkward because Secret weren't expecting that gank in that position, but they didn't actually expect Newbie to have him as a reward place there beforehand. So they finally eliminated the Wisp early on the fight. I think Moogie did the majority of the damage to the Wisp. And right now, Secret just have to protect their Wisp a lot better, but they don't have like that great of like instant disables to prevent them from zerging down. Because Moogie's, he would gladly trade time lapse to get Wisp down to a health where he can't tether into the fight. Mm -hmm. When he has that Diffusal Blade as well, life is going to be easier for him to get that attack. Yeah, they might need like swaps out or something like that in order to save him, but... But that's not the way you want to play it, right? Like the VS no. is meant to be swapping in to initiate. Because the Spirit Breaker can't be guaranteed to get through any further. Like, the fact, like, this is probably the first fight in a while where Puppy's Charge hasn't knocked back two heroes. Yeah, they can easily just wait for the Orchid, though. Nature's Prophet, seven, 700 gold. So he's going to have it in less than a minute. And then after that, they can just kill the Weaver. Because Weaver went to Fusil first. So there's no way for him to get out of the Orchid for a very long time. Was it going to get BKB, Lincoln's? Lincoln's not reliable versus NP. Or what, Manta, Lotus, Yules? These are all pretty terrible items on him, so... I don't actually know. He's. I guess he's gonna have to get PKV on, on the Weaver. Probably. Man. It's a really or early Orchid. You charge him, you teleport in, you Orchid him, he's dead, and he can't even farm out outside the map too. So, I think he's gonna have to go. Uh, I mean, Link is really good for Spear Breaker, so I, yeah. I, either or. Yeah. Well, the amount of stuns which come after that is pretty minimal from Team Secret, and isn't that kind of what you build for anyway? You're gonna get just get hit by like random stuff, the lightning storm, like MP yeah. ultimate. But you, ha you have to soak something up. Right now, Team yeah. Secret, they're doing what you were talking about, going in for Roshan. They already have the Observe Ward on top of the Dire Shrines. They're very well aware of. Well, actually, no, they're not. They're aware of SEC moving over, but everyone else under the cover of smoke. So the Observe Ward not seeing enough. Mugi will reveal himself. But Team Seeker back out for the moment. Fada adding pressure to the bottom lane just to get Newbie to try and react or put some time pressure on them to do something. Yeah, there should be a free tower for him. I'm not really sure why Fada's not pressuring. They did see him smoke right directly under the shrine. Yeah, and they're still sitting underneath the Observer Ward. All right, now Fada's actually pressuring. Takes out the tower with three hits. Yep, yeah, just waiting for one hero TP in, but maybe they're going to have to walk over here if they actually want to be able to.
Oh, that's a Ooh. good rune. Uh, maybe they left far to take the tower, so Kaka, Invis, Echo Slam to start with, Tome to follow up, still has the fissure control and the scythe. Goodbye, Fada. You get the tower, but you also get 70 seconds on the sideline. Man, Kaka's been so fortunate in the last couple of minutes. He was at 200 gold in that f before that first smoke on top. But those two great fissures and yep. a fortuitous Invis rune. That's two-thirds of his blink dagger right there. Oh, they're back into Roshan. Now Team Secret. Echo Slam and Scythe are both down. Profit can buy back if they want to take the fight. The charge forward goes towards Moogie. KP. Oh, this is throwing a spanner in the works from Team Secret with the Plague Lords going down. A nice double fissure. Ends up actually stealing the pulse. They want to get closer, but relocate. Just pulling Ace back out to safety, so Relocate falls. And Newbie, are they actually going to try and do this? It's a dangerous choice, but they're going in after Roshan. Team Secret see a lot as Puppy charges forward, pushing back to The Nova is nice from KP, but is the Nova better from Lashrak? No, it's not. Newbie will survive. Fada brought back into the fight with that silence. He's going to end up killing off that Rubik Faith. He'll actually end up ticking from Puppy being right behind him as well. As Newbie losing way too many heroes. It's all up to SCCC, who's four-staffed himself back up to the high ground but he got roche he and did ages that is sick <laughs> i can't believe they actually completed that with all of the stuns coming in from team secret that's a fight i'd love to see again wow that was such a bold play from Nubi. they saw roche at like 25 percent then they, they went in and they got a buyback out of nature's profit too wow i actually can't believe that turned out so well for newbie now thought, uh, uh, you see SEC's net worth because of that, like the top three belonged to Team Secret for so long. Now he's sitting up just shy of the Lashrak, who's down to eight Bloodstone charges as well. That was a really hectic fight. Like I think Newbie were trying to like maybe cut them off with the Fissure, because they don't actually have a good way to get across the Fissure. Oh. It's me again. <laughs> it's not me again. Still, great fight. <laughs> maybe we can have a look at that later. But for now, regathering yourself in the lanes. The pressure on top lane, this time it's not being applied by Fada though. Like it's being applied by Lashrak. You're pushing mid one up there to do it as Fada a lot more cautious on the map. He's going to have to be way more cautious once Urshaker gets his blink dagger. After yep. this creep wave, he should get it. But he could potentially die if he's not careful. You've actually got really good ways to get in and out now. Even like that four stuff on, on the neck or... Like you got the hood, you got the plate mail, so he's already pretty tanky on that front, both armor as well as the resistance. But having four stuff gets you so, like easily out of the sprout, gets you away from the damage which is coming in, but also potentially can push in the ES for that better initiation. And now you get a venomous with four stuff. They can start kiting. Yeah, they're gonna have a really hard time like actually just catching him out. A lot of their abilities are they have so much single target. The only one who does a massive amount of AoE is the mm -hmm. But he needs someone to set up the stun for him. Well, they're coming in. Puppy starts his charge forward, going towards SCCC. Faith needs a grab nice and quick. He doesn't have it, however. It's the chain stun, but the Necro, he, he just shrugs it off like it's nothing. Kaka's in the tree line, moving up, but that blink deck is available. He jumps out of the trees. And Team Secret, they haven't got anything, and actually it's Newbie who can start turning this one around. Mugi, look for that swarm, look for the attack. KP's moving over as well. They got the Orchid over on the Necro, but now that won't really do anything. There's no follow-up to the silence. All the amplification, and it's Puppy who's caught on the wrong side of the tracks. Defusaled up, completely bone dry in the mana, and executed for good measure. Secret, no, this is this is nothing now. They back out, fight a precious bottom lane to attack the tier 2 tower, and KP's already TPing down here to defend that. So because Newbie have been playing so well as a ball of five, I think Secret just have to tackle this way differently than uh, they were. They did very well in the first 10 minutes, I would say, splitting Newbie's resources up. Their supports constantly had their eyes on mid lane, uh, whereas they actually threw the majority of the pressure on the bottom lane. But now that Newbie are kind of just si sitting together, T1s, they don't really care if they're around in that area, then they're just looking to fight as five. And Secret, they have to utilize the mobility a lot better. and. It's really just up to Fada, I would say. Like, Fada is the one that needs to be able to take down towers for free. He needs to be able to dodge the ganks when they go around, and he needs to be the one to split them up right now, because right now, I don't really think he's putting enough pressure on the T2s uh, and split push threat in order for Newbie to react. Like, well, that, that, that's countered five man, right? You split them up mm -hmm. in front of the map, and he's the one that's supposed to do so. Maybe Leshrac, too. I think Leshrac can go out and then get relocated out at the last second, but that's a riskier play that you would do if you're more comfortable with that. Yep. But I'm not sure if they think they can get out alive. 
Well, right now, Team Secret are actually struggling with that that problem of how do we kill off SCCC. Like, maybe you're going to keep doing what they just did. They put SCC on the front lines, and you want to initiate, you charge forward, you soak up two abilities, but then you can four staff away, you can fish, you block them out, and then, okay, if that game doesn't work, Team Secret looking for something else, but they're scanning at the moment, but just a fraction of a second too late. Newbie is rotating down. Okay, they'll reveal themselves by coming behind the tower. That's fine, as long as they don't lose Fada. Losing Spirit Breaker is okay, even if he gets Reapered. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Well, there's Fada doing his job. Yep. Attack the tier two tower, force them to come back, even sprouting to check the tree line. And that Satter is really pumping the legs. Bottom tower is I didn't realize I'd run so fast. <laughs> he has Helmet Dominator. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's just... He, that's a sprinter, right? There. He went for a way less farm-oriented build, too. This is a way more teamfight build with the Helm into the Lance. Uh, you'll see... Oh, Newbie have to come back. Mid one's ready to attack, so KP just trying to force the lane. Probably not expecting Team Secret to defend in such a manner. And now it's up to Newbie to try and get that catch out up on the top. So Fada will be it. The relocate is pulling in mid one, but the scythe is already killed off Fada down for a very long time. You've stolen the edict once again. So Yapsaw low on life. Four seconds before he'll be out of this one. Three seconds, two seconds, one, and he's out. But the damage is still there from Secret. Like you, you lose Yapsaw, but SEC the four stuff it gets him away from the follow up stun. He has to go shroud. Wand. He's got his death pulse back up again too. Need to survive as he's so close to having that Radiance up and running. But now is the Rubik Faith being initiated. He's going to pick up Puppy, toss him away. But the top pressure is still on. They're coming in. They take the Tier 3 Tower and Team Secret. They've opened up a window as they push the top lane. So this was a very, a very classic maneuver. You see the NP top. Um, and then because of that... They have to react to that and then they gank bottom, but then Secret make the next level move of relocating top to a system in droves, and that was a very easy T3 from them. Mookie died at the start of the fight. Kaka did not do a great job of protecting him until he could get his, uh, his uh, time lapse off. So while we're in that replay, uh, top melee racks did fall and Ace actually got sniped. So they did sacrifice that for the melee racks. But Team Secret still up that one racks. Pretty happy with that. Mm -hmm. KP was just not really that great in position too. I guess he like kind of baited them to go on bottom, but again, you don't really want to be split up versus whist lineup. You're gonna throw away your life for minimal gains yeah. versus uh, versus the relocate. Because Team Secret can always just bring in the numbers. So it's <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, oh, yeah. they have a they have a, a large upside in the fight too. With the glimmer cape on Puppy, uh, he if they block the Reaper Scythe, then the fight should go pretty easily for them. Because right now he gets a Reaper Scythe kill and then he's kind of unkillable for the next 5-10 seconds of the fight. Yep. So blocking that is going to be so key, especially if one of your teammates oh, get echoed. Oh, Kaka, able to get that initial stun, then blinks down, out, and the Scythe will find the kill. So Puppy will fall. They're looking for a secondary one. Hitting the Gale into Ace means there's a good follow-up. He'll swap <laughs> back up for the relocate. He brought himself in range of the IO. So Newbie get denied the one position they wanted to kill off. Fata said a creep skipper, so this push from Newbie will be difficult to sustain. In fact, impossible. They don't have a creep wave. They yeah. will get the IO, but they still don't have the creep wave, so they can't push the tower. That's why Fata already down the bottom with the trees attacking into the tier two. And Mugi can choose if he wants to deny or not. Yep, he has to go BKB next. Or get too much trouble and too much magic damage coming out from Lash. Is Fada just going to snipe the tower? Is he sniping the... Yeah, they're coming into bottom. BT forward, there's your there's your Orchid. Follow-up stun, should be able to control up Mugi. And Kaka, he looks at it. But all he does is look. That's a death boyer right there. Yeah, he needs way more farm than this Weaver. Struggling a lot. That's the thing, though. Like Versus the early Orchid that won Nature's Prophet, there's just not really that many things you can do. Just have to play safe, maybe bait out with Kaka sitting behind you. So, how long does this continue to work for Team Secret? Like, the panel were talking about just how early game orientated Team Secret is. Where is their clock? And, like... It's fine. It's they fine. took a rack around racks around 25 minutes. And it was a melee rack at that, so... You're okay with this. You're still gonna continue to scale. They had a little bit of a hiccup in the mid-game, but... 
So maybe the question I should phrase differently, like what's the what's the timing target of Newbie where they feel like they're strong enough to keep delaying the game to win late? Like is it is it, when, is it that BKB and, and Weaver actually have yes. an influence? Is it when Weaver can be big enough to, in the fights where he can kill the Wisp and no one can really touch him because they don't have any solutions to the BKB. But right now, I don't like even if he BKBs, he might not have enough damage. They have double glimmers. They have Sprout, which is actually a very large problem for Weaver, despite having BKB. He doesn't have any way to get out of it right now. Yeah, we uh, rely on the four staffs of either Necro or his supports. Yeah, but do you really want to force that? To, so force that for your four staff of Weaver. Yeah, I don't. Really think it's you... better than time lapsing it out. What's he gonna do? Go old school? Well, he like... just wants to kill him. I think you just sit there. But go 2008 build. Get Battle Fury on Weaver. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> the Pike build is pretty good. I like the Pike build a lot because you can. Like, you have the vision from the Swarm. That's one of the biggest problems with Pike is you don't have any vision to get those extra attacks in. But with Trek, Amplify, Swarm, these types of skills are really, really good at connecting, at killing supports without really expending that many of your resources. So now BKB is coming out mm. pretty good, considering they always kill Fada, try and kill Fada. Roshan timing, no one broke the smoke earlier, so... No Observer would scab this out, and Prophet's gonna TP inside the pit too. Yep, so it pops out for a second, but... Okay, it looks like Newbie is working something out, but they're so quick with killing off Roshan. Observers and Sentry sees the Venomancer moving over, but KP's way too late in Farda. He actually BKBs to walk in close, looking for his initial target, so they've already killed off Roshan. They get a, an, even an Arcane Rune into the hands of the Lashrak. That's a pretty sick play. Just BKB and walk in. Like, what is the Earthshaker going to do once you see that? You can't do anything. You, if you blink past them, the chances of you whiffing are just extremely high. And then if your smoke pops and you wait out the BKB, you lose Roche. So it's a win-win for Fada. Not many times you'd say like a 10-second BKB that doesn't result in a fight is worth triggering. I mean, their lineup's pretty fragile slash sensitive, right? So you don't really want a fight to go catastrophically. If there's, you know, a 5% chance of it going catastrophically and 0% chance of he just BKBs and walks out like that, you know, you, t you take that if you're a secret. You're in a pretty good position now to see the... Use this Aegis to get a Rax and you'll the be fine. The Observer are a lot. Face right behind him. A quick Orchid. They forced up, but the Sprout from Fada was after the forced up was done. So the pickup and throwback from Faith. He makes himself target number one. The Wrath of Nature hitting hard into SCCC. He's forced to go Shroud. The stun from mid one. He's coming in close. The Amplification is doing his work. The Echo Slam, minimal effectiveness, but at least the stun will do it. Fada locked down and brought down Kaka. He can't survive for this, however. Mid one is just so big with his own BKB. He's able to do so much damage, Yapsol will be the sacrificial lamb as Mugi finds himself a double kill out of this fight. But man, they need to respect mid one. He just he just stood there and dealt it. Yeah, that's why I'm pretty surprised that Necrophos went for this uh Radiance build with without the hood. It's it's really tough fighting to this lineup without a hood. And, and they don't have any defusals, so like hood plus ghost shroud should make you very, very tanky in the fights, but he's just not that tanky. Yeah. But at the same time, I do realize, he does realize that Moogie's very under farm and he has to build a BKB second item, so he's like, okay, well, where is that damage going to come from? But that, you don't really want, like, long sustained damage, though. That's the thing I don't like about the Radiance this game. It's like, you're versus an Io. He is going to be able to outheal this, like, you know, small ticks of damage coming out from Venomancer and Necrophos. Yeah. So you want, like, huge amounts of burst. Like, just defusal, kill the wisp. You want like veil into whatever burst you have, and then you want a uh, you want a reaper. Like fights that last longer than five, ten seconds are not good for newbie. Well, that'll be easier for newbie once Moogie has more damage. Like he's queuing up the desolator at the moment, and then he can then he yeah. can focus on killing off the IO. Then that fight could happen. But with the way the fights are unfolding, Moogie's getting controlled up by Fada. And then he can regather his position and then look for Yapsor on the back lines because he is the only one that can really reach the back line. I don't know if you can really commit a blink echo slam to kill off the no, IO. Maybe a Fisher. Yeah, but like he's then the only uh, the only one Mugi's that they can reach the back line without sacrificing a huge amount. I mean, IO is farmed. You can tell Yapsor plays these farming supports a lot. And he's, it kind of translates to his IO play, having Greaves already. It's a little absurd that he has Greaves. So now that he has Greaves, he can just Greaves out of the Diffusal Purge. Oh, nice swap. Very quick. Onto the ES. 
Uh -oh. You do actually steal the nether swap into Faith, so they have that as initiation now, but no ES of 44 seconds. <sighs> they don't really and his Echo fight. just came off cooldown too. This is not great for them. They don't want to fight because Necrophus doesn't have buyback, nor does he have BKB, but Seeker are going to force the issue. Oh, mid one tries to go up. Heavy damage into the tower. There's no swap from Faith. As you said, they're not going to try and force that engagement, but Fada, he had the Treant in through the top, but now is looking to pressure in the bottom lane. And he's down there with Ace. In fact, that's exactly what Secret are doing. They're playing musical lanes at the moment, just bounce from one to the other and then see which one you can land on before the music stops. The music is going to stop right now for the poor little Rubik, or maybe not. He glimmers and pushes himself out. The Scythe, it doesn't kill off mid one. KP, finally the Nova will be able to have a bit of an effect, but Ace swapped him straight back into his own death. It is a cluster buck inside the base of Newbie. Fada wants to run away. He is gunked up, hidden inside the Sprout. The charge from Puppy Crease, just enough space for him to TP out and regenerate back in his own trying. This is exactly what Secret want. They still haven't lost anything big. Puppy in the trees is an acceptable loss. Echo Slam a little bit further forward. They find their initiation, but the damage, it was more control, allowing Newbie now to move back to the front lines and give more space for Moogie to do some damage. The pick up and throw back is there from Faith. Mid one, however, he turns on the pulse once more. That spill damage with the Orchid. Moogie can't get out. Trapped in the trees with no push available. SC wants more, and he needs more. The death pulse, the damage. Fata can not be allowed to escape a second time. He can buy back if he wants to. As SCCC, he is just outnumbered. Fada's coming back. The Ghost Shroud's letting him live as the Absor taunts him in the tree line. Nuvi, they will lose everything. The second time Necro has died, Mugi as well as Faith will have to buy back. They know if they lose this lane of Rax, they're crippled beyond repair. And with this game, you can safely conclude that Yabsor can play Wisp well. That's decent enough. Someone push KP out of there. So, okay, Glimmer Cape. They'll hide him with that, but then the charge is coming from Puppy. They see him perfectly. Faith have to pick him up and throw him back down again. Fada, the BKB protects him. They still want KP. They want these cores down. Moogie, he can't even bring in the damage. Faith trying to escape, able to do so. Glimmer Cape protected back to his own fountain, but they call it. Newbie realized that resistance is futile. Team Secret will take game one in this best of three series. That long, drawn-out fight, there was a ton of great individual play. Obvi the obvious one was Speed of Breaker saving the Nature's Prophet, but also SCCC, he actually almost won that fight with the Reaper on mid-1 before he got his beat.